Welcome to Plan Hub's Master Class Courses for Takeoff and Estimation. My name is Greg. In this video, you'll learn how to use the takeoff and estimation tools to complete an estimate for the flooring trade. Knowing how to set yourself up for successful takeoffs and estimates will save you time and money so you can bid more projects and grow your company. For a full takeoff and estimate, your first step is to obtain any pertinent details. For this training, I found a project, reviewed the plans, sent them into the takeoff tool using the file viewer. Please watch the takeoff getting started videos if you'd like to learn more about this process. To get started, the first thing we have to do anytime we're taking measurements is set the scale on the page. I see the architect has set this at one quarter inch equals one foot, so I'm going to go up to my toolbar and click scale. By default, it opens to a standard mode, and I'm going to click the menu to open it up and select one quarter inch equals a foot so that my scale matches the scale that the architect has defined for the page. Now I have a compass icon on the name of the page. If I hover above it, it even shows me what I have the scale set to. You can use the ruler tool with any known measurement to verify the accuracy of the scale that you just set. The ruler is a reference only measurement tool and it will provide a length measurement but will not add any measurements to your takeoff. I left click there to begin. I'm moving it across, it's following my mouse as I go. I want to center the cursor over the black line as finish. And it looks like we're coming in at 11 feet 2.58 inches, very, very close to the 11 feet 2 and 3 eighths inches that we wanted. Now that I verify the accuracy of the scale, I'm ready to start taking floor measurements. I'm measuring the area for this tile. It's a very large section, it is irregularly shaped. So using the 2.4 squares and rectangles is probably not ideal. In this case, I'm going to use the multi-point tool so I can draw around the entire floor space of the area to be tiled. To get started, I click the area icon from my toolbar and select multi-point. This is for floor tile 2. So I give it a custom name so that I can easily see this measurement in the right side of the page on the measurements panel and recognize what this measurement represents. Then I click set. Next, I'm going to align my cursor with the beginning point. I'm scrolling in using the wheel between my mouse buttons. Scroll it forwards and it zooms, and scroll it backwards and it zooms out. And I'm going to left click there to start my measurement. As I move around this area, it's going to begin to fill in behind you just as a reference to let you know what space you're actually measuring. We've got a lot of territory to cover here, so I'm going to zoom right along. I'm putting a point down at every location I need to change direction with the line that's going to outline the space to be measured. If one left click will drop a point anywhere you would like it. If along the way you accidentally drop a point where you don't intend to, there's no worry, no need to stop the measurement. All you have to do is press escape one time on your keyboard and that will remove the last point that you dropped. Then you can continue on. I'm going to continue until the entire space marked by this pattern grid is filled in. And when I set my last point, I'm going to double click to drop it. I could have single clicked and then pressed enter once. It would have accomplished the same thing. Now that I've filled in the entire floor space for floor tile number two, we have a square foot result over in the right side in the measurements panel, 806.67 square feet. And if I expand that out using the plus sign underneath, you'll see I also get a linear feet. That's because anytime you take an area measurement, you automatically get the linear feet perimeter. Next, I see that we've got some transition strips that we need to measure as well. If I want to measure the transition between these two floor materials, I can use the linear tool for that. It's the proper choice for this linear measurement because it does allow you to measure around corners. Segment tool also measures straight lines, but it does not give you the ability to go around corners, just discrete segments. I'm going to name this CS1 for transition strip 1 and accept the rest of the defaults in the properties box and click set. I get my crosshairs up for my cursor and I'm ready to start measuring the transition strip location. I click to drop the initial point, stretch it out until I need to change direction, and let it follow me to the end point. Double click there to drop the final point. Now I have a link for my transition strip at 33.06 linear feet, as well as my square footage for my floor tile. When you have an object in the field that you're measuring and you want to eliminate it, 
you can measure the entire surface area that you want to measure and then go back and subtract out the area you want to remove. Since I've completed the flooring measurement for its square footage, now I can start a new area measurement to remove this utility sink. To get started, I'm going to press area. Since this is a square or rectangle, I'm going to choose two point. I'm going to call this utility sink so I can remember exactly what object I'm removing from the source. And then I click set to get started. Two point measurements can be drawn with just two clicks. So I'll align my cursor with the top corner, click to drop the initial point, spread the shape over, it follows me as I move my mouse, and then click to drop that point. So with two clicks, we've measured the surface area of the square shape. Now we need to perform the subtraction. I'm going to click subtract from the full bar. First, we have to tell the computer what area is going to be the subject area. I'm going to click in the box and choose F2. I could have clicked in the field anywhere where I've measured F2, and it would have selected that as well. The same thing for our selected area to be subtracted. I could click here in the box and choose it, or I can go to the field where it's measured and click there. Either way will work. Then I click Apply. The subtracted area turns red to give you a visual cue to know that you have already subtracted that from the area measurement. And now we have 4.18 square feet that has been removed from the 806.67 previously had. Inside the takeoff environment, we have the ability to save measurements that we've already configured to a library for future use. To get started with that, I'm going to click Library tab at the top right. Next, I'm going to scroll down and see I don't have a folder yet to receive flooring measurements, so I'm going to click my Folder Plus button. A new folder is added at the bottom, so I right-click to rename it. I'm going to give this the name Flooring and press Enter. Now I'm ready to send these measurements across to be stored in my library for future use. I'm going to right-click on TS1 choose Save to Measurement Library, select the flooring folder I just created. Now I click on the Library tab again, scroll down to my flooring folder, expand it, and you can see I have one measurement underneath it. So any project, any plan I'm using in any time in the future, all I have to do is click Library, open up my flooring folder, right click on TS1, choose Add Measurement, accept what I've already configured by clicking Set, and then I'm off and running with a new measurement. There's no limit on the amount of measurements that you can save in your library. Next, I'll show you how you can use these results to directly send into estimation to create cost items, or by the use of assemblies, we can very easily charge for multiple items at the same time that are based on the same measurement result. For instance, this floor tile is going to have an adhesive and the floor tile, so I could charge for those both at the same time. Assemblies allow you to convert between measurements and units, so you can easily go from square footage to gallons of material as long as you know the recommended coverage for that particular product. To begin creating the assembly, to receive the square foot measurement to charge for the floor tile and the adhesive at the same time, I'm going to click the Assemblies navigation tab at the top. Then I'm going to click Create. Next, I'm going to give the assembly an overall name. In this case, Tile and Adhesive from Area Result. That's a long title, but that will easily let me recognize this whenever I'm ready to use it from the list of assemblies that are already created. Next, you have to determine the measurement type for the assembly. In this case, I'm going to choose area. Since that is defined as an area measurement type, this assembly can only receive results from area measurements in the future. Next, I'm going to add a cost item. This will be the first billable item based on that area measurement result. This is going to be my quarry tile. It's a 12 by 12. 
You can include whatever description or name items you like that will help you recognize this and help it to be self-explanatory when you utilize it in your estimation. Next, the unit cost for this particular tile is about $9 per square foot. So I put $9 in the unit cost box. I'm going to set its item type as a material. And the unit of measure, I'm going to charge by the square foot. I'm going to click Save to save the progress. And anytime you create a line item or a cost item in your assembly, you must apply a formula to the back side of that so that the assembly knows what mathematical functions to perform to that particular entry. For this one floor tile, I simply need to take the square foot area result and use that straight as it is. No conversions are necessary. I already have one saved, so I click Add and apply it to cost item. Next, I'm going to add a cost item for the adhesive. I'm going to give it a name accordingly. I could even input a brand or any other information in the description that might help me identify what this cost item is in the future. Pile adhesive, I'm going to pass on the cost of $34 per gallon with a coverage rate of 70 square feet per gallon. This is also a material, and the measurement is going to be my desired outcome after I convert. So I'm going to look for gallons by pressing G on my keyboard and then selecting gallons with a click. I'm going to save what I've done so far and then click the F of X button so that I can add a formula to convert from square feet to gallons of adhesive. That's exactly what I'm going to call this formula. Square feet to gallons of tile adhesive. Next, we need to input the formula so the program knows how to convert our factors after we send the result. I'm going to take the area and divide it by 70 feet, which is the recommended coverage by the manufacturer for this brand of adhesive. Next, I'm going to test the formula by clicking test. If I had 140 square feet, I would expect the return to be two gallons. When I click run and scroll down, that is the exact result I get. So I'm going to save this formula so I can use it on any future cost items and assemblies I would like. Then I'm going to click apply to cost item. Next, I'm going to click save changes at the bottom. Now I'm going to navigate back to our takeoff. And I'll show you two ways that you can charge for these items based on the measurement results. On the floor tile one, I can right click on that and choose to send it to the assembly that I created. I have a lot of area assemblies already created for my demonstration account. However, for this one, I'm gonna scroll down and find the new one, tile and adhesive from area result and click to select it. Next, I'm going to put it in the newly created blank project estimate one. If there's not an estimate here, just simply click create new estimate and Project Estimate 1 will be created when you click Add. Since it's there, I selected Project Estimate 1 and I'm clicking the Add button. Next, I'll verify the totals. These are the direct measurement results. If that's what I want to use for my calculations, I simply click Insert Values. Next, I want to click the banner that acknowledge the change, and that's going to take me directly to the page in the estimate where that assembly result will be listed. Now here is our assembly line item. I can click the expand arrow on the right side and you can see both cost items below. The quarry tile itself, based on the measurement quantity, result of 806.67 square feet at $9 per square foot, has a total of $7,260.03. While the cost item under the assembly for the adhesive would require 11.5239 gallons at $34 per gallon or 391.81 for that cost item. The total for these items are added together at the bottom of the page in the Project Estimate 1 total section. This is only relevant to this page of our entire estimate. You can have additional pages if you would like to break your estimate into different sections. You could simply click the plus button to add additional pages. Any pages you would like to rename. For instance, Project Estimate 1, I'm going to click the pencil and rename this to Tile Estimate and click Save. 
Next, I'm going to send the result for the transition strip directly into the come cost item. No need to send it through an assembly, since I simply need to know the linear feed of the transition I need to purchase. So I'm going to right click on the result and choose Add to Estimate. I'm going to place it in our tile estimate and click Add. I'm going to navigate to Project Estimates by clicking the Navigation tab at the top. And now I see a new line item, a blue one. That's how I know a measurement result was sent directly into my estimate. The green result is from an assembly. As I scroll over, you'll notice there is no price per linear foot for this particular item. But I can change that by clicking the pencil on the cost item. And then I can scroll and address any of the available fields. If I want to add more details in the description, I can do that now. If I wanted to add a waste so that I can accommodate for cuts, I can put the number of percent that I would like to add. In the unit cost, this transition strip is going to be billed to the customer at $6 per linear foot. I'm going to slide across. If it were taxable, I would put in my tax right here and address any of the fields I like, then click Save. After you click Save, the math is reconciled. You can see that we have the quantity from the result was 33.06 linear feet. But since I told it to add 10% to it, our new total quantity is 36.366 linear feet. At $6 per foot, that math has been reconciled to a total of $218.20, which is now added to our page total at the bottom, as well as our project totals at the top. We've covered how to add a cost item based on a measurement result two different ways. The first way would be to send through an assembly that you already have created and ready to be used on any project in the future. The second way would be to send a measurement result directly in to become a cost item in our estimate. The third way would be to add a cost item on the fly by clicking the Add Cost Item button. For instance, if I wanted to charge for labor for this project and give it its own line item, I could call this cost item labor. The item type, of course, would be labor to match. And let's say it's going to take me 100 hours to complete this project. Unit of measure is going to be hours, so I select H on my keyboard and select hours from a list. Next, the unit cost will be the amount per hour that I'm going to charge. If I use $45 for this example, when I click Save, it's going to reconcile that math and add $4,500 to our estimate for the page and for the project. We also have a cost items library that's available. With thousands of pre-configured items, you could select and choose to add to any estimate at any time. To demonstrate the cost items library, I'm going to click cost items at the top to navigate to the cost items library. When the list populates, I'm going to type in grout so that I can add a grout to this project. We have 115 total results to choose from. So to narrow down, it would be beneficial to add additional details to the search. Here I see we have a quarry tile grout, exactly what would benefit us here in our estimate. I'm going to select it by clicking the checkbox and then choosing the plus to add it to the estimate. I need to tell it which page to go to and then click add. Now I can navigate back to my project estimates and I'll see that there's a new line item that's been added. Here, we can click the pencil and give this some greater detail. This grout is a material. I'm going to charge for two pounds. Unit of measure is going to be by the pound, which PlanHub uses LBs to recognize pounds. So I type LBS on the keyboard and then select pounds with a click. This grout is $20 per pound, and I click save so that the math will be reconciled and that cost item is committed to the estimate now. An additional feature that we have available is you can customize your own cost item library. In order to do that, I can click the checkbox on the left side of the cost item that I just added, the quarry tile grout, drop down my actions menu, and select add to cost items library with a single left click. To see where that item is for future use, I navigate back to my cost item library. This time, I'm going to narrow by owner by clicking the filter arrow next to the name owner. I'm going to select my company and click OK. Then I can search through all of the items for grout. 
and press enter. Here is the cost item, quarry tile grout. If I scroll over, you see it's still got the unit cost that I applied to it because I added that before I saved it to my library. So that unit cost will forever be attached to this unless I make a change here in my library. Anytime I want to use this in the future, I come to my cost items library, find it in the list, and then click add to estimate. If you need to print the page from your takeoff, navigate back to takeoff, then you can use the download PNG button in the upper right hand corner, click one time, or you can go to the name of the page on the left side of the page, right click, and choose download PNG from this location. Either one will do the exact same thing. The program will require you to confirm the download, and then my browser Google makes me click one more time to open the file. Then the printout with all of its markups and measurements included will be in a picture window that you can save, print, or whatever you like from this location. We also have a project measurements tab. Here in the project measurement section, every measurement made during our takeoff will be accumulated into a table. This can be exported to a CSV file, which will open up in either Google Sheets or Excel. I click export once, then Google makes me click to confirm. And here's our printout of all measurements taken during this project. To export your estimate, click the export button in the upper left hand corner of the page. Highlight the checkbox with a click to choose the pages you would like to include in your export. Then click the export button. Click to verify the download, and then my browser of course makes me click again before it opens up the file. The first page is a summary of the project totals for the entire project. Then we have tabs for each page of the estimate. And finally, at the end, every cost item in our estimate is listed here in a bill of materials. I hope now that you have a basic understanding of how to perform a takeoff for the flooring trades using surface area measurements, length measurements with the linear tool, and how to send those results into estimate to create cost items so that you can begin to monetize the measurements that you've made in your takeoff. At any point, if you would like to receive individual training, I welcome you to click the account manager button in your plan hub window and then schedule time with your account manager or ask them to assist you in scheduling one-on-one -on -one time with a plan hub takeoff and estimation trainer.